Hello, 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 seventh graders. Um, by the time that you're watching this, you probably have already heard that we will not be coming back to school again this year. The last day will be May 29th. Um, I'm very bummed out about that. I really, I really do miss you guys and seeing you in the classroom a lot. Um, but I am getting some joy from doing these read aloud, so I'm gonna keep doing them. Um, you also will probably have noticed now that this packet is being created by both me and Miss Damon. So rather than having four packets a week, you will have three packets a week. And me and Miss Damon are bringing our two units together to work on this. So this is the first article. Um, the first article from this packet is for the Wednesday, April 22nd assignment. I'm going to read this article aloud to you right now. This article I pulled it off New LA and it's titled Governments, Monarchy, Oligarchy, Aristocracy, and the Rule of Law. The rules in a monarchy type of government are pretty clear. Whatever the ruler says goes. Everyone must bow to the king or queen. The ruler can yell off with his head to anyone who challenges their power. Of course, many people have had different ideas about how the ruler should govern, and those beliefs support totally different types of government. The rules shape the government's legitimacy or how, will, or how willingly the people accept the power of the government. Rulers who bring prosperity to their lands will be loved. Many countries have been governed by the absolute decisions of a ruler. Not all of these places have been unhappy. A government whose king or queen rules justly and wisely may enjoy a great deal of consent from the people. Sometimes people may accept their leader because they are afraid of the results if they don't. In the words of the writer Machiavelli, it is better to be feared than loved. As long as the feared ruler is seen as bringing about good fortune or protecting the lives of his subjects, it is entirely possible that his people will be happy. An absolute ruler may be accepted because the people believe the idea that God gave him or her the right to rule. This belief is known as divine right. It, is, it often has been associated with a monarchy, a form of government in which the power of the king or queen is passed down to their children or relatives. These royal families sometimes believe their powers were bestowed by God or some higher power. Some Chinese emperors ruled by divine right. However, the emperor's rule was through end if his people perceived that he had lost the mandate of heaven or approval of a higher power. Some rulers achieve power through wealth. There's another type of rule by man, the oligarchy. This is a form of government ruled by a few elites whose right to rule is based on possession of wealth, special rank, military position, or achievement. Similar to an oligarchy is the aristocracy, which means the rule of the highest. In the aristocracy, there are more rulers than an oligarchy, but this group is still small and dominated by wealthy and powerful people. Essentially, if a government is rule by man, the people must accept any and all decisions that are made from above. The subjects or people being ruled have little, have little to no say in any government decisions. In a rule by law, political system, the people with the power cannot make up their own rules, but must follow an established code of law. In ancient times, a Byzantine emperor established Justinian's code, a set of laws named after him. We still follow parts of that code today. The Romans were also known for implementing laws, as was Napoleon, emperor of France, many centuries later. Are constitutions essential to governments ruled by law? Today, most governments at least claim to be ruled by law. The most common thread is whether or not that government has a written constitution. However, the most important question to ask is whether or not the constitution actually is the blueprint that determines how and what policies are made. For example, Nigeria officially is a democracy with a written constitution. However, the country has been continually ruled by dictators, each of whom has ignored the constitution. On the other hand, Great Britain has never had a constitution as a single written document, but has for centuries been governed by law. For much of their history, the English had a limited monarchy. That is, each king or queen must follow a rule of law. So whether a king can order off with his head depends on the type of government that is accepted by his country. If he sets the rules, rule by man, or if accepted outside rules allow, rule by law, the victim doesn't have a chance. That was a very brief overview of different kinds of governance, specifically ones that are kind of a centralized power at the top. You may have noticed that none of the ones that were really talked about here is what the U.S. has. Um, 
we have something closer to like a parliamentary system. Um, we don't really have like one, one kind of body at the top. We specifically have the judiciary and Congress to kind of balance that out. So this is a little bit different than what we see in the United States. Um, we have a few questions here to answer. Four quick multiple choice questions. That is all the work that's required for you for today. I'll be back for a recording of the second article about ancient Egyptians.